Welcome. In the, in the last video, we went over the tutorial zero, getting it running, where we set up a read-only Postgres API along with setting up a Postgres QL database. In this video, we're going to do tutorial one, the golden key, which will allow some users to change data in addition to reading it. There's going to be chapters below, so feel free to skip around to a specific step and leave a comment if you have any questions. Before we get started, let's just do a quick high-level overview of what we already started. And so we have four programs for desktop, which was used to run the Postgres database image. Uh, Postgres, which we downloaded via Chocolatey, which we're using to run Postgres based upon the config file that we set up, it uses uh, the host port from the Postgres image it's running on the Docker desktop. We also set up a schema tables and roles as well within the Postgres database, which is being used in that config file as well. Down here, what we're doing is just expanding upon the image just to get a of the database setup we have where we have a new schema we set up some table and data and then a few roles which has the select access for the read-only and then an authenticator role which is used to connect to the database so within this config file here see that we have that authenticator role uh, which allows you to connect to the database with the password the host here and then the port along with the database name, schemas we put in there along with the role. The next one we have is the Postgres database. We installed this because we were running into an issue running Postgres. We didn't have the associated DDL file, the libpg. So after we downloaded data, Postgres database and updated our path, last one we have here is the command prompt, which we used to actually set up the database and then as well as test the Postgres APIs. What we're doing in tutorial one here is gonna be expanding on the roles to allow the user to have more permissions when they're authenticated, just so that they can do more than just select or read the table data. Okay, for step one, we're gonna add a trusted user. This will be for users that authenticate to the API and will have increased permissions. First thing we're gonna do is connect back to the database. Now we're gonna create the new auth user role, which has a no login, since the login is gonna occur with authenticator. Now we wanna grant that user to the authenticator role grant the usage of the schema we have. So update the schema name and the role app. The next thing we're gonna do is grant all permissions to the new role that we created for the table that was created in the last video. So at this point now we have a new auth user role which should have the post patch put uh, delete permissions on the YouTube videos table here in the API schema. So for step two, what we're going to do is make a secret to attach the configuration file we have set up for the Postgres. This will just get us one step closer to allowing the clients to authenticate with the API using a JSON web token. For our tutorial, we're just going to do a, a not very secure secret here. So this is what the new config file would look like. So after you get that done, we're going to restart our Postgres server. So we'll come into our uh, Postgres uh, prompt that we're running. We're going to kill that with Control-C, and then we're just going to rerun the command. Okay, so we reran this Postgres command three times and it worked the third time. Okay, so now we have the Postgres server up and running with the updated config file. For step three, we're gonna sign a token. So we're gonna just gonna go to the jwt.io site and create a token manually. In a different video, we can go over how to create our own within the database or with another authentication service. To manually generate the token, we're gonna to go to this jwt.io site. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the encode it and decode it side. So what we're doing here is we're replacing payload. And so the payload will hit our new user. So whichever you named your user with, you'll do role, colon, auth user, or wh whichever your username was. And then for the verify signature, what you're going to do is grab your secret that you have in your configuration. So after you modify the payload and signature, what you're going to do is copy this new token here. And this is going to be what, what we use to connect to the API now. So just copy that and just save it in a spot for later. And to note here, while the token may look well obscured, it's easy to reverse engineer the payload. As you can see, when we were uh, modifying this, you can see how the token is getting modified as well. For step four, we're going to test out mutating the data with the API. So let's follow these commands where we're going to set the token as a variable in the command line. Uh, for us, it's going to slightly be modified since the table name is slightly different and we're using Windows here. So for the first one, we're gonna use the set token to set that variable. And then this token here is just a copy of step three. For this next command, you can see that curl URL is slightly different. The token 
uh, syntax is slightly different. And then for the data, we escape the quotes here. And then to test that works, so just do a curl on the YouTube videos. And as you can see here, that insert was successful. Now let's test out the patch. And so for testing out the patch, we're gonna slightly modify it. We're only gonna patch the record that is ID one here. So as you can see here, we have the parameters of ID equals one. Now let's test it out again. As you can see now, the ID one is now true. For step five here, we're gonna expand on step three where we created the token manually by adding an expiration claim to it. Adding the expiration will allow the token to expire over a certain amount of time from creation. Otherwise, the token we created in step three would stay valid until secret was changed on the config file and the server was restarted for Postgres. So we're gonna to connect to the database again. And we're gonna copy this query to grab in the time here. And so now we're gonna copy this. And then if we go back to JWTIO, and we update this payload here. So right now we just have the role with the auth user. Uh, we're gonna add the exp and then the time we just created here. Okay, so now with the copy the new token and set that as the variable now. Now just test that it works. Okay, so now we're just gonna test that it works. So you can see that's working now. And then we'll give it a couple minutes, a little five to see if we get the expired after that. And so now after the five minutes, we ran this command again, and you can see that we're getting the JWT expired. That wraps up tutorial one. To go back to that diagram from the intro, you'll see here that it's slightly modified with what we just changed. So what we just changed in orange here. So for the database side, we added a new role called the auth user, which has all access to the table. We manually created a new token. We expanded the configuration file to include a secret, which we generated via the command prompt. And then we created a new JWT token through JWT.io site using the secret that was generated. And then the auth user role along with an expiration time uh, that we queried through the database. We use this manually generated token to call the API endpoints. So at this point, you should have a API set up that is authenticated through a JWT token that is manually generated. Leave any questions, comments if you have any in the comments.